Hi and welcome to another Wiggly Wild show. So today I'm going to show you how to make slime very similar to the slime produced by one of these. I'm sorry he's not awake at the moment, he's a bit shy. This We're one. also going to make some slime that glows in UV, okay, so this is the slime we're going to make. In a similar way to my scorpion that also glows under UV light, as you can see here. Slime glows under UV light, as you can see. This slime, if you add water to it, that is tonic water, instead of regular water, and also colour it with the food colouring, you will find it will also glow under UV light. Um, so if you want a friendly, um, non-chemical based one, um, then this is a great one to make. For the first type of slime, you just need some corn flour and some water, equal amounts of each, and some food colouring, so I'm using some gel. Put that in the water, whatever colour you want, and then just add the water very slowly and still it's, until it starts being difficult to um, stir. So you'll find when this slime is under pressure it's a solid so it is called a non-newtonian liquid because it acts like a solid under pressure but a liquid when it isn't um, so this means you can roll it let me get some there we go. okay so you can roll it into a ball but when you stop doing anything with it it acts like a slime um, so non-Newtonian liquids, great word to use specifically with your chemistry teacher or your science teacher just to scare them because they might not even know what it is. And the next slime uses detergent. Okay, so if you have an allergy to detergent, you might want to use some gloves. You don't need a pith helmet unless you're particularly clumsy like me. And um, it also uses some PVA glue like you could get at school. Your PVA glue as much as you like of slime, as much slime as you want. And then add, this one works particularly well with um, all matte bio or non-bio gel, which you can get in Aldi's um, if you're in the UK. Otherwise you can use liquid starch, um, but that's very difficult to get hold of in the UK. Um, or there's several other types of detergent, but you basically need one with starch in it. Okay, and gel form best. Add this drop by drop until it starts coming together in a kind of stringy form. This will probably be half of the amount of glue that you've added. So as you can see, that one's starting to come together. Okay, just before it comes together is the right point to add your colouring if you want to add a colouring. I'm using um, UV reactive um, paint, but like I said before, you can use anything that reacts to UV. So that could be tonic water, it could um, anything that says UV reactive on it. And then keep stirring, and what you are doing is you are reforming the polymers. So the polymers are currently short chains in the PVA, and you are making them into um, you are breaking them up and making them into longer chains. Okay, so that means you'll be able to stretch it. So basically, the more you work with this, the more um, the chains form and they can get really, really long. Um, so that's the basic slime that you can make. And you can make it harder or more gooey, depending on how much of the um, laundry detergent that you put in. So to demonstrate how a bee actually communicates with a flower by electrical fields, um, I'm going to use a theremin and my hand with a bee on it, um, just to demonstrate how as the bee gets closer to the flower, the electrical fields um, are more powerful when they're given out. And they've actually only recently discovered this and it means that bees can tell when a flower has recently been visited by another bee or is out of pollen or nectar. So it's really useful for the bees. So this is my th theremin. So as you can see, bee approaches, nothing. And we're getting in within distance that you can land. And obviously it, the flower gives out an electrical field when it's actually reached by the bee. 
and these changes once the bees are visited as well so that they don't give an electrical field out when another bee comes up. Do you like pink marshmallows? And here are cochineal beetles and they are commonly used in a lot of our food additives. It's called E120 if you look at the back of the packet. So what I'm going to do is I've got some dried cochineal beetles and I'm just going to grind them up using a pestle and mortar. And in here I just have water. And if we give them a bit of a stir, okay, as you can see, it goes a lovely pink colour, which is why they are mainly used. So it's for pink, um, sort of pink sweets, um, pink marshmallows, like I said, and uh, things like lipsticks, um, blusher, lots of pink makeup as well, still contains cochineal beetles. So about 80% of the world's population still eat invertebrates. Um, here are some dried crickets, totally safe to eat. Eating insects is also more sustainable as well. So you never know, in a few years time, we might be eating them again. Another way to link chemistry and nature is through bioluminescence. We've touched on it a little bit in terms of the scorpion secreting a chemical that um, glows under UV light. But there are also other invertebrates, particular things like glowworms, um, light, light bugs, they're sometimes called in America as well, um, and jellyfish, and they actually secrete their, their own light. So they make their own light by mixing two chemicals in their body. So we can demonstrate this with a glow stick. Okay, there's two chemicals in there that just when you break the seal, they mix together and they produce a light. And this light is very, very similar to bioluminescence. Thank you for joining us for our chemistry special for the Wiggly Wild show. And if you want more of this, then sign up for one of our Wild About Science workshops um, for the Wiggly Wild show, or just get us in to see the bugs themselves that produce all of this without any help from us. Thanks a lot, bye.